Now we can apply what we've learned about z-scores and use them to make comparisons. I want you to imagine that there is some kind of measure, some kind of test for male attractiveness. And we have three guys who have completed this test and they each got a score. Shifty scored 35. Mickey scored 65 and Antonio scored 90. What do these scores tell us? Well, as they stand, the scores don't really tell us very much. What we need is some kind of standard, something that tells us about a typical score, like the mean, our measure of central tendency. So for instance, if the mean was 15, then all of these guys are above the mean. But if the mean is 100, then all of these guys have scored below the mean. And so what we do is we go to the manual that exists for this imaginary test. In the manual, we find that this test has an average score of 60. Now we can compare each raw score to the mean. In fact, we can subtract the mean from each raw score to get a measure of deviation. So Shifty has a deviation score of negative 25. Mickey has a deviation score of positive 5. And Antonio has a deviation score of 30. Now we have deviation scores. How can we compare them? Well, again, we need some kind of standard of the deviation. What is the typical amount? of deviation. We need a standard deviation. And in fact, we already know how to calculate standard deviation. We're not going to calculate the mean or the standard deviation on this very small sample of three. In fact, we're going to go to the manual yet again and look up the standard deviation for this test. And this time, we find that the standard deviation for this imaginary test is 10. All that remains to do, therefore, is to divide each of these deviation scores by the standard deviation to standardize them. And the result will be a z-score. So Shifty, with his deviation of negative 25, has a z-score of negative 2.50. Mickey's deviation was a positive 0.5, giving him a z-score of positive 0 0.50. And finally, Antonio, with his deviation score of positive 30, receives a z-score of positive 3.00. Now that we have the z-scores, we can compare where each of these men fall on a standard normal distribution compared to one another and compared to all men who have taken this test. But in order to do that, we're going to need to learn something about the distribution of scores within a standard normal distribution. And for that, we need to learn about the empirical rule.